everyone during their life have you know some some need I think we have to really look at our communities and see where the greatest need is and the greatest need in my opinion are seniors this is a, a population that really uh, can be overlooked sometimes. A lot of them don't have any family or neighbors. They don't want to impose on them. Loneliness is, is a big problem. They, they just can't get around. They don't drive anymore. When you and I want to go somewhere. We get in the car and we go. I know that they cannot afford taxis, most of them. We found that a number of them were um, on really small fixed incomes. And, and these are folks that um, are unable to, to find another way to make it work. It really opens your eyes. You know, you really see the needy people. We're all going to be older, and not all of us are going to have family close by. And it's nice to know that there's an organization that you can call. My name is Steve. I've been with the caregivers eight years now. Yeah, I'm Joan Green, and I've been uh, driving, gosh, probably 13 or 14 years. I've been with the caregivers for six years. I'm Rita Soderberg, and I've been driving for nine years. The person I'm visiting now has been over three years, and she says, I'm not a caregiver anymore. I'm her friend. <laughs>We all want to be independent. We all want to um, to stay in our own homes. I mean, it's oftentimes where we raised our, our children. Um, it, it's the most comforting place to be. So the little things that we do allow them to hang on to something that's very, very comforting to them. They've been where we are right now, and they've been a vital part of in the community, raising their children, uh, working, um, having successful careers. And now their spouse might be gone, family for whatever reason is not around, and they're unable to drive themselves or to maintain that type of independence so they can stay home. If you think about that, if you can't go to the store, you can't go to the doctor, you can't go to the dentist, you can't uh, really function in the society we have today. Hi, Virginia. Hi. It's so nice to meet you. Today I'm driving Virginia to a doctor's appointment. My son, he used to work at nighttime, but he worked days now. So I, I needed the caregivers to give me a ride to the doctor. I know that it's just going to be a great experience and doing something for someone that just really needs the help. And I truly believe in helping these people maintain their independence for as long as they can. It makes me feel wonderful. I love them. Yes, they're very nice. It's about the transportation, but more importantly, it's about the conversation that they have on the way to the doctor's appointment. It's about, um, you know, being having someone that cares be there when they get out of their doctor's appointment to try to process some of those things. Right now, I have two clients that are Claire and another woman, Nancy. Claire and I go side by side through the aisles. We find what we need. She gives me her list ahead of time, so we have everything all or orchestrated and organized. And we just kind of go through and get things done. Well, Steve is my personal caregiver driver for Walmart and Hannaford once a month. So I don't have to call and schedule any rides. And helping them out with finding rides to get to the doctor's office or the grocery store or whatever. We found that a number of them were um, on really small fixed incomes. So we designed this program um, called the Caring Cupboard. We created what started in one room and has grown into a warehouse, um, a food pantry, and it's a mobile food pantry. So we have one group of people that would come in here one week and they would make all the calls and we'll go down a list of what foods we have. Would you like any canned fruit? And they tell us what they want. And then on the week of the delivery, Another team of people come in here with the shopping list and they physically fill up the bags of food. It also includes fresh produce, bread, meat products as well. And they put that in bins. 
And then that Thursday night, another group of people comes in here and delivers the food. And teams of volunteers come in for businesses like Comcast, Fidelity Investments. People's United Bank supports caregivers to deliver food to housebound senior citizens. And it's fun and we make it a team effort. They need the food. It, it, it's just a little and it helps. But also, they're housebound and we might be, you, you don't know who they see each day. So when you come in, Valerie from Caregivers, they're happy to see you. They talk to you. They ask you questions. You um, ask them how their day is. And it's, it's a lot of fun. It's very, very rewarding. It's our opportunity to feed a generation that once fed us. Hey, chocolates? Oh, that's for me. Wow! These are some retired school teachers that taught my children's teachers. These are the people that, that, that built the mills, that built the highways that were driving. And they fought in the wars so that we wanted to create a program and a service that gave them some dignity, that, that paid them back for what they'd done, kind of like as a good neighbor would do. We have our friendly visiting program and our telephone reassuring calling program. And those are our programs around emotional health. My name is Susan, and um, I've been with the caregivers for six years. <laughs> Maybe I wouldn't worry anyway, can't we? She's a wonderful person. She spoiled me. I'm a spoiled brat. And she's taught me to slow down a little bit, to see a little bit more of life. Um, I don't know. It's just, it's just a wonderful experience. You know, it's just a part of my life to, to you know, give back to the community. We also do a lot of one-day service projects. We deliver Christmas presents to seniors, simple things like a pair of slippers or a robe. Um, around springtime, we've done bouquets of flowers to clients. You get a knock on the door and someone's there that just wants to wish you a happy birthday. That's a, a wonderful program. It's just a nice, easygoing uh, volunteer effort that puts you, you know, one-on-one -on -one with somebody. This is for me. I don't have to do a thing. All I have to do is join start in the program, get together with a program coordinator, and maybe I can help some people too. Doing volunteer uh, service with us uh, once a week, once a month, once a year. I pick one that works in my schedule. They're very accommodating for my schedule. They do everything to keep elderly people independent and uh, also disabled people with no charge. There is no charge for any of the services that we provide, and I think that's, that's unusual. And a lot of people have a hard time with that. I wish I could tip them, you know, but it's not possible. We do have a staff that we need to pay to organize the rides, to do the caring cupboard. A lot of staff work that has to be done. The fundraising events that, that we do have, the money is uh, well used. If it was your, your relative or parent and they couldn't get a ride to, to wherever they have to go, wouldn't you want somebody to step in and help them? It's just a matter of giving a little bit of your time and the benefits and rewards that you get back from the sincere gratitude that every single client expresses. It's worth anything else that you're doing. I do this, I work at a food pantry, I just feel like you have to do stuff to help the community because if not, you know, someday, God willing, I'll get to be older and hopefully if I need help, there'll be somebody there that I can pick up the phone and call and they'll come take, help me out. We recognize that the volunteer really is the most important piece of the equation. Okay. Because they're the ones that are out there directly representing our organization. They're the ones that are making the magic happen. I broke them into it. <laughs> So we strive to make sure that the volunteering experience is, is a good one. If you want to directly impact people's lives, this is a great place to be. You leave feeling not like you've done something special, but like you've received something. It's hard to explain it. It's just a nice feeling. You feel like, uh, yeah, you're really doing something that people really need. She's taught me, like I said, to slow down and smell the roses. You know, it's just been, it's been wonderful makes you feel good, you know, and you get uh, much more in return than what you give.